this is where you're producing all your pheasants, all your, your brood survival is highest in these areas that are full of pollinators and bugs and everything else. Without the bugs, we don't have any pheasants. My name's John Dasso. We grew up raising beef cattle, corn, soybeans, hay, wheat, a little bit of everything. Dad has done a lot, a lot of work to this place to, to, to make it what it is today. I came here in 1981, bought this farm, and most of my ambition was because it had a big wetland on it and some oak hickory and I wanted to improve on all that as much as I could to sustain it, keep it viable, and of course attract as much wildlife I could allow. My curiosity was always what this place might have looked like 500,000 years ago. You know, I'd pay an immense amount to see a picture of that. Trying to restore the oak savanna, we collected a bunch of burr oak acorns and just worked up the ground and then slung them on top, kind of rolled them in. And so we're just trying to restore some of what what was before before we got here, and you know, provide wildlife habitat and in all the ecosystem functions that that a that a savanna provides. So this is what. Everybody calls Turtle Pond. There's not a lot, not a lot of these wetlands around. Most of them have been drained and, and converted to farmland. We've been able to put quite a few wetlands on the ground the last um, five, six, seven years, we've seen the return of a lot of waterfowl to the area and numbers are up. So we're, we're pleased to see that and, and hope it continues. As long as we have participation from landowners, that's all we need. Just on the other side of the ridge here, that was all cropped and now that's all in CRP. But this specific spot right through here, as long as I I, I can remember this has been prairie, which is, which is pretty cool to say. CRB has been a good program for us. It's allowed us to take those areas of the farm which we struggle with and end up costing us money and then now we're able to make a little bit of money on those acres. In the end, you gotta stay profitable to keep the farm in the family. So it's kind of a balance between you know, what's best for the land and, and how we can make that work in our operations. Everybody in the area says, I wish we had 20 John Dassos around here. He's doing uh, prairie restoration seedings. He's doing controlled burns. Um, he's moving dirt on wetland projects. So he's kind of a jack of all trades. The pheasant numbers have exploded again around here. Then on top of that, we've even had quail coming back in the area. Like the change that he's made on the landscape just in this 10 mile radius. Can you imagine if every county had a farmer like that? Talking to John himself and hearing about this place, it's just, you see that he's doing more than the average person to conservation and putting a lot of habitat on the ground. So it's just a, a way to, you know, walk in here and see, all right, this is what it should look like so that there's my standard now. John Dasa really embodies stewardship from an agriculture, but also from a conservation perspective. If you think about generations of sustainability. It's hard to imagine anybody else. John's also made proactive decisions related to yield potential and really make informed decisions about crop rotation as well as potential restoration areas. And uh, he's been able to share that with others 
around his area that allows his impact to scale across the ecosystem. There's not a whole lot of people that are good at doing conservation and agriculture, and they've figured out a way to mesh them perfectly. There's nobody better in the country that's, you know, more, uh, more deserving of this award. I think this is an award for the farm, not an award for the farmer. I mean, being recognized for the, the, the work that has been done on this farm, I'll take credit for a slim majority of what's happened. It's kind of a culmination of everybody's work coming together in this one award. With the farm as a whole, including the production side of things, I hope to keep it profitable enough that we can keep it in the family and keep this going because this is a good thing for us, this is a good thing for the land, this is a good thing for the public, this is a good thing for everybody and, and we're gonna we're gonna make it work and and enjoy it.